But I, I don't think that alternative data is only 12 years old because we've been using data forever. Um, and as I think about that, the evolution, 25 years ago, a subscription to the New England Journal of Medicine had a positive ROI. Then at Pfizer, um, we relied very heavily on IQVIA, for, formerly known as IMS data. And we had three people sitting in a closed room. All they did all day was SAS SQL accessing a VAX to extract uh, prescription level data for us to analyze. Then we created our own analytic data mart and were able to access that data through SQL. Then claims data started uh, appearing and we had to have a 100 person team in Mumbai just to access this data using various sampling techniques. And that data became more readily available, technology improved, and now I can access the 100 terabytes of claims data that I get every month on my iPad. As these data sets become more accessible, um, more sophisticated, uh, and more people start using them, the alpha value of, of building uh, an investment process around these data sets becomes um, less profitable. You can't just stop reading the New England Journal of Medicine, stop using IQVIA data, stop using claims data. You have to add to those, and those data sets become table stakes. So now at Royalty Pharma, I have to have IQVIA data, epidemiology data, um, claims data, payer data. I have to have, uh, we heard from the previous panelists about the explosion of biological and computational chemistry data sets. I have to have drug disease interaction data. I have to have um, adverse events databases. And all of these are not only very expensive, uh, but have to be brought in and they come from different places. And so we have to have data engineers and data scientists and epidemiologists to not only curate and stage the data, but also analyze and extract insights.